everyone. Welcome to Lilybug's Library. My name is Linda, and I better check that I've got my sound turned up, which I do. Um, so just coming to you today with um, an update on my May TBR, and I'm slowly working my way through it. Um, and just before I uh, get started too far, just to shout out to my uh, to wonderful son uh, who built my new bookcase for me. So that was terrific. It's uh, not something I'm great at, so I was uh, really happy to have the help. So really happy with it. It's, um, you know, I managed to uh, kind of fit everything in there. It's got three shelves, you know, one that you can't see. And uh, it's nice and big, and it's got some, you know, a couple of doors on the bottom. Uh, so really enjoying having that. So uh, today, the first one we're going to talk about is uh, the Summer of Sunshine and Margot. So it's a bit of an older one, um, but uh, oh, it was so good. It was, uh, it was really a page turner. I, I couldn't put it down. Um, it was, it's about two sisters, uh, and it goes through the timelines for both of them. Uh, one is called Sunshine, and she is... Um, um, she's very much known for her looks and she gets hit on a lot and she has done, um, you know, really kind of for part of her life, really kind of embraced that and went with it. And, you know, guys come along, they want her to leave her job and go do something and she does it. And she's a nanny, so that doesn't always work out so well. So now she's kind of settling down. She's a little bit older and she's trying to kind of turn over a new leaf. So she's going back to school. She's looking after this, uh, the son of this man who has lost his wife. And she's really trying to uh, not be that person. So it's uh, interesting to see how she uh, kind of navigates all of that. And uh, of course, it's, you know, the fact that he's a single dad and she's the nanny and yeah, we know where this goes. But, <laughs> but it, was, uh, it was captivating to see the way that she really tried to um, kind of just change the way the world looked at her and change the way that she looked at herself. Uh, so her part of it was was very good. And then the other sister, her name is Margot, and she goes to work for this woman uh, who's older than she is. I, Yeah, I'm sure she is. Um, and uh, the woman is very much uh, a free spirit, if you want to call it that way. Uh, she is known for doing outrageous things. She's known for doing really whatever the heck she wants, but it's not always something that's good or popular. Um, so for instance, they, they go to a, a party and, you know, some guy wants to, uh, to touch her bum and she's, you know, she lets him, you know, right in the middle of this party. She's just, she's known for the outrageous. So she, Margot's job is to uh, live with her and her adult son. The woman is living at her adult son house, son's house at that moment. And she is uh, getting Margot to teach her etiquette and to teach her kind of how to rein all that in. Um, because of the fact that she is uh, dating and getting ready to marry a diplomat who, you know, you can't do those sort of things in diplomatic situations. That's not going to help the person you're married to, and it's just going to cause a lot of drama in newspapers. So, so she's trying to rein that in. And meanwhile, of course, Margot, while she's staying there, meets the woman's son, who is the total opposite of her, and he's very much interested in artifacts and in uh, keeping a very rigid schedule and, you know, being by himself a lot. And so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a, um, it's just quite compelling to see like the fact that she's, she's so much one way and he has worked so hard to be the other way. And so it's interesting to see where all of that goes. Now, um, as for the rating I would give it, there was two little parts in it that I didn't care for. And so for that reason, instead of it being a five out of five, I gave it a four out of five. Um, I'm just trying to see how much of a, uh, how much of a spoiler it is if I tell you what those parts are. Uh, da, da. Well, okay, this one, one I can say, and that's that this woman that's so outrageous, um, she, she is complicated. She's an interesting character. Did I care? Not so much. Um, 
I know it was she was a necessary character, but at the same time, I she wasn't someone I really enjoyed as a character, and I didn't like too much of the book being um, taken up with her antics. Uh, didn't do it for me. Uh, the other part um, was the fact that. Uh, some at some point in the the book, and I'm I'm not going to say too much one way or the other, but at some point in the book, one of the characters lets someone kiss them just to see if they're over them, and I thought oh, that's a really stupid idea. <laughs> I just didn't care for that at all. I thought that was just um, not respectful to the person that she was dating, and and not respectful to herself. So for those reasons, I gave it a four out of five. But still, excellent book. So the next one that I read was not on my TBR. Big surprise. Uh, it was called The Phoenix Crown. Or, sorry, not that one. Phoenix Crown we're reading now. Uh, it was called uh, Gardens of Thorn and Light. And so that one um, I listened to as an audiobook. Um, I don't know even how it ended up on my Audible, but, you know, it, it could have been a freebie. I'm not sure. Um, but it was, it was good. It was um, about this girl named Amethyst. And in the beginning, she, and it could be a YA book. I'm not positive about that. I kind of got that vibe, though. Uh, but in the beginning, she is uh, having problems at school. She's having problems at home. Um, she's just not doing well. And she's, um, she doesn't know exactly why or what's going on. But part of it is that she is having to hide kind of who she is because she keeps uh, sprouting these thorns and, you know, she's either, you know, she'll have to pull them out or she has to like hide that they're there. And, you know, they come, you know, without any preparation, like she doesn't even know what's happening. It just happens. And so then with the thorn, when she pulls it out, it leaves a scar. So she's got scars kind of all over her. People think she's a freak. You know, it's uh, sounds like I won't say typical high school angst because uh, it's not typical people are spreading thorns, but it's it, her feelings are like that. So she ends up getting sent to live with her grandmother. And so her, she hasn't even spoken to her grandmother in years. Her grandmother seemed to have just kind of cut them off. And so she's concerned about all of that. Doesn't really even know this woman anymore. So it's, uh, it's a, more of an upheaval, upheaval for her. I can't talk today. Uh, so then she, when she goes there, she meets this boy named Ben and, uh, he's very interested in her and she's interested in him too. And she's somewhat getting to be, um, just a normal teen, but then she starts discovering that there's something going on in the woods and she's kind of been plagued by these monsters kind of either whether it's in dreams or whether it's thinking that she sees them, you know, part of what you know, she thinks is making her crazy. And so anyway, when she starts seeing them there, she starts um, venturing into the woods, even though her grandmother told her don't go in the woods. And uh, I feel like that's, you know, people say things like that. Nobody ever listens. Uh, so anyway, once she gets in the woods, she discovers who that is and what's going on and starts to also figure out why she's growing these thorns and a lot about her past and her um, her family is, is starting to be revealed and it's nothing like what she would have ever imagined. So really good, um, very absorbing, very, um, uh, interesting to, to see kind of where they go with all this. Um, it is something I, I mostly enjoyed, but it did have what I would consider a bittersweet ending, which is, I know some people like bittersweet endings. Um, wonderful husband's a big fan. I'm not. I much prefer the happy ever after endings. <laughs> you know? So, you know, it depends on what you like. But uh, I gave it a, a three and a half out of five. Uh, so the next one, um, also not on my TBR, um, but part of uh, an Audible book that I, I listened to. And the because I was doing books off my bookshelf, there were no Audible books, of course, on my TBR. But I have a really hard time just doing one book at a time. I'm not quite that focused and I'm a little scattered. So that's why I go back and forth. Excuse me. And so uh, this one was uh, Death Becomes Her. 
and in its death, B comes her, like the bumblebee. Uh, and it's by Nancy Coco. And I think on the last video, we were talking about a book that was by uh, a pen name of Nancy Coco. So that kind of got me thinking about what have I read of Nancy Coco's? And the next thing you know, I found this one. Uh, so anyway, it's about Ren. Um, she runs a shop that contains bee products. So she has uh, different salves and uh, she makes like, you know, bee cookies and she has like honey cookies and she has all kinds of things that are related to bees candles honey you know you name it so she is out for a walk one day with her i believe it was a cat yes with her cat named everett she walks him on a leash which i think is kind of cute i've tried that with dudley he's not a fan so <laughs> so she but everett seems to like this so she's out on the uh, beach one day going for a walk and she discovers uh the body of this woman who is dead and it turns out uh, they find out that the woman had a lip balm in her pocket with, um, or no, she had the label of a lip balm in her pocket that was from this woman's shop. So they feel that it was her lip balm that, that killed her. Uh, so she's the main suspect. So she is trying to figure out who actually did do it since she didn't. Um, the characters are great. Um, all the, the different people in the neighborhood and uh, Ren herself and her cat. You know, I mean, it's all very cute. Um, she gives recipes, too, throughout the book. Now, I don't find those... I mean, I guess I could rewind and write them all down, but I don't tend to pay much attention to them when I'm doing an audiobook. Um, it's more a thing. If it was actually a physical book, you would get more out of that part of it. But that's just me. Um, so, uh, and then there's a, a police officer in the town who's looking into all this. His name is Jim and he has an attraction to Ren and is kind of, um, he, he doesn't want it to be her and he really doesn't think it is her, but still he has to ask the questions. He has to do his due diligence. So really enjoyed that one. Um, I thought the whole thing was, was really sweet and endearing. It was just, um, uh, all the characters were cozy and, and wonderful and and the killer in the end when you kind of find out what's going on it was uh, it was definitely a surprise and so I really enjoyed it and that one I would give five out of five uh, so a couple more um, I DNF'd one of them uh, it um, I never like to, to give like a rating for uh, something I DNF'd um, as you know, and this one was Over the Moon by Stacey Lee, which was one of the ones I thought um, was going to be a five star read. Um, I just couldn't connect with the characters. I tried and I just I'm not even sure what it was, whether I just didn't find the story interesting or what exactly. Um, but uh, it just didn't work out. So I, I watched it or uh, read a bunch of it, and then it was like, yeah, I just couldn't do any more. So again, probably a very, <laughs> it's Dudley, probably a very good um, story, but just not for me. Um, so just give me one second. I'm just going to pause this and uh, collect whatever Dudley has. Sorry about that. Dudley is going a little crazy. He's <laughs> got a lot of energy today, so he's all over the place. So uh, where were we? <laughs> so the last one that I read was an audible, or no, wasn't an audible book. The last one I read was an arc um, from Book Sirens. And so it was another one by Ellie Thornton. Um, so the last one I read was called Crazy Little Things. And it was one of the Diamond Cove romantic comedies. And it was about Axel, who was um, a member of this family. And he gets set up with Kate, who works in a library. Anyway, we won't go into all that. You can watch the video that, uh, that talked about it. But this one is the same family. So it's still in Diamond Cove. And one of Axel's brothers, his name is Sean. And he was a Navy SEAL, and uh, he also runs his own salvage company. And he, um, when he was younger, he met this woman named Bluebell, and they just call her Blue. And they had a really good connection in high school. I think it was high school. It might have been college. Doesn't matter. Anyway, he had a very good connection with her. 
and apparently they date it for some time and then things just kind of fell apart so he ends up meeting bluebell again and they kind of um have to navigate whether or not they're going to get back together what they still think of each other uh so although it would be an interesting story just with that there is so much more to it because uh bluebell is actually in witness protection and she was part of a mafia family and so there's a whole lot of drama that goes on besides just the two of them so it's so well done i just i absolutely adore ellie thornton i think she writes amazing books um and now that's two in this uh, in this family and i really want to see you know there's a, a bunch of brothers i want to see what happens with all of them um, and it's, uh, it was just fascinating to read and, uh, just, uh, it was one I really couldn't put down and I think I went through it in like a day. And so I really enjoyed it and it was a definite five out of five. So did want to make sure I mentioned that one. So the other ones, um, that we're working on, I'm still working on the Phoenix crown, um, and I'm still working on The Cat Who Went Up the Creek. So both of those are a work in progress. Shouldn't be too long. Um, Phoenix Crown, I'm, I'm reading at night with Wonderful Husband. Uh, the other one I'm reading during the day. Um, and sh it, they'll definitely be done, you know, before the end of the month. Uh, All right, so that's it for me today. So uh, let me know in the comments um, what you think of the books that I've read so far and what you're reading and um, uh, is on your TBR for May. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.